Okay, I want to start back here with theorem four. Um, this is a very important theorem in your book, so you want to play, pay close attention to this one. Um, so it says, let A be an M by N matrix. Then the following statements are logically equivalent. That means for a particular matrix A, either they are all true or they're all false. Okay, so that's a powerful um, theorem that we have here. Okay, first statement is, for each B and RM, the equation AX equals B is consistent. So that's saying, no matter what the right-hand side is, for this particular matrix A, AX equals B is always consistent. Another way to say that is that each B and RM is a linear combination of the columns of A. Okay, because we saw just earlier, that a times x, when you multiply a times x, you're actually taking the linear combination of the columns of a. <clears throat> this also means that the columns of a span rm, right? Because you can produce any vector in rm as a linear combination of the columns of a. And then down to the nitty gritty, um, how you actually determine whether this is true or not is by putting A in echelon form, and these are all true if A has a pivot position in every row. So we saw that in the last, in the maple uh, demo. Okay, If there's a pivot position in every row of A, that means of the coefficient matrix, then there's no way the system could be inconsistent because you could never have a row of all zeros and then in the augmented column something non-zero. Okay, we're going to look at one other way to uh, compute A times X. Um, but first, um, we're looking at the inner product of two vectors, because um, we're going to use that. So if we're given two vectors in Rn, say X and Y, then the inner product, which is also called the dot product of X and Y, is uh, computed as follows. Okay, it's just X1 times Y1 plus X2 times Y2 plus so forth, plus xn times yn. Okay, so just multiplying like components and adding them up. So here's an example. You've got x is 1, 2, 3, y is 4, 5, 6. Then the inner product of x and y, or x dot y, is 1 times 4, plus 2 times 5, plus 3 times 6. Okay, so now let's talk about two ways we can compute a times x. Um, we already looked at one of these. Um, that's by taking a linear combination of the columns of A. So here's an example um, to compute uh, the product of this matrix A times X. Then we take uh, the first element of X and apply that to the first column of A. Then second element, negative 4, times the second column of A, and so forth. So we generate this linear combination and uh, end up with this vector. Now the second way we use uh, inner products and the ith element of the uh, inner product of uh, the ith element of AX is the inner product of the ith row of A with X. Alright, so looking at that um, you look at um, to get the first element here, the negative 3, then it's the first row of A, inner product with X. So that's going to be 1 times 6 plus 2 times negative 4 plus 1 times negative 1, which is what we have here in this first element here. Okay, then to get the second component of A times X, it's the second row of A, inner product with X. So negative 3 times 6 plus negative 1 times 4 plus 2 times negative 1, okay, as we see here. Then to get the third element, it's the third row of A, inner product with the uh, vector x, okay. So um, those are two different ways you can compute the product of a matrix and a vector. 
for the most part, we will use this method, the linear combination of the columns of A, just because that fits in with the way I want you to be thinking. However, um, this method down here is probably quicker. So if you just need to compute um, the product of uh, a matrix of a vector, uh, you might want to just use this method, uh, using the inner product method, just because it's faster. So you should practice both, just make sure you know how to do each of these methods. Okay, and I think that's it for this lesson.